Have you always wondered what really happened at that garden party with Meghan and Harry and Prince Charles and Camilla? I have. And I have done exhaustive research into that garden party and I have read many different accounts of that garden party. And there's two accounts that I believe because they were from first-hand witnesses and they were in two books. One was Andrew Morton's book, Megan, that was published in 2018. And the other one was Lady C's book, Lady Colin Campbell's book, Megan and Harry, The Real Story. So I'm going to tell you what I found out. So let's set the scene three days after Meghan and Harry's wedding. Everyone's on a bit of a high and there's a garden party happening to celebrate then Prince Charles' 70th birthday. And it was attended by Prince Charles, Camilla and Meghan and Harry. And Harry made a lovely speech, a really warm, affectionate speech to his father. And they were saying, isn't that great? You know, Megan's having such a great influence on him. You know, she's brought him and his father closer together and, you know, all those sort of vibes. So that he makes the speech. They go down the steps and start to greet and meet all the people. Now, after about 15 minutes, something happened that changed the whole atmosphere of the garden party. And the, the account that I believe the most is in Lady C's book. And the reason why I believe it is Lady C went to a private dinner party the night after this garden party. And a person who was attending that private d dinner party actually attended the garden party and overheard something Megan said to Harry. So after about 15 minutes talking to guests and being charming, Megan turned to Harry and I quote from Lady C's book, Harry, this is really boring. Let's leave. And Harry, Lady C says to his credit, you know, oh no, 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 we can't do that. It's too soon, you know, way, way too soon and sort of put her off and said, but she insisted with the words, and I'm paraphrasing it now, um, that where they've seen us, that we've attended, we've been seen, that we were here, come on, let's go, more or less our job's done. Lady C makes a good point that she couldn't seem to distinguish between a royal occasion and a showbiz occasion because in show business often stars turn up on the red carpet and, you know, at a premiere, for example, and they'll do the red carpet, get all the shots done, do their interviews and then often they will leave even before the movie's been shown. So they just seem to be at the premiere. They do what they have to do and then they get out of there. And that's a very accepted showbiz way of uh, handling events and, and occasions. And so Megan's looking at it sort of like that. Well, we've come in, we've done what we had to do. We've done the speech. We've done a bit of meet and greet. Okay, let's go. It's over. And so, you know, she doesn't understand that royalty at a garden party are speaking to everyone and making them feel special to thank them for all the good works and all the volunteer work and everything. It's, it's a reward. It's a recognition. And so you stay as long as you can and pay attention to these people and make them feel important and valued. That's the point of it. Also on that point, Tom Bauer had a good definition of that. He said, the royal family exists to shine a light on others and the work that they're doing, whereas celebrity shines a light on themselves and allows some, other people to just get the edges of the light. They share the light a little bit, but the spotlight is on them and then they share the light a little bit. And I thought that was a really good explanation of the difference, you know, that clash of cultures between royal family and celebrity or royal family and Hollywood stars or even royal family and politicians because the royal family doesn't have an agenda other than shining a light on other people. So unfortunately, getting back to Lady C, uh, the woman that was at the garden party overheard and evidently other people overheard as well and it was all around the garden party and then of course that story leaked. So, you know, that was the start of uh, people being a bit wary of Meghan. Uh, and the other thing that was interesting in Andrew Morton's book about the garden party 
was he doubled down on the loveliness of the whole thing and he made mention of something I'd never heard before, that um, Camilla actually held Megan's hand during the garden party very intentionally while they were having an affectionate conversation. And Andrew Morton said that the point of that from Camilla's point of view was to illustrate to the world that the family had warmly embraced Megan and that she was firmly part of the family. So there you have it. I hope you like that little bit of inside insight into that particular garden party and event. And I will see you again very soon. Bye.